Hello everyone, welcome to episode 8 of the Kara Khan vs Everything series. In this series, I normally play two 10 minute games, but in this one, I'll be trying one 15 minute plus 10 second game. So the game will be longer, the game analysis will be longer, hopefully my explanations can be a bit deeper, and I don't completely run out of time, is the hope. A few of you have suggested that I do this in the comment section down below, so I hope this is a nice quality of life change and that most of you agree with it. Let me know if you disagree and you would rather two 10 minute games. But for those of you new to the channel, my name is Alex, and the whole idea of this series is that whether I play the white pieces or the black pieces, I play a Karo Khan-esque setup with C3, D4 with white, and C6, D5 with black, throwing in moves like A6 and A3, which have become very popular recently for good reason. And I'll be trying to explain my thought process while I play so that you guys can enjoy the commentary, but also try and understand how a higher rated player thinks as I am rated around 2000 normally. With that being said, let's get into the game and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so we are facing Quatschnik from the Czech Republic. Let's go with C3. I believe that's the Czech Republic. Yeah, they... um. Almost drew of Portugal uh, last night when I'm recording this, which was kind of crazy. And one of my favorite players, Pedro Neto, assisted the Portugal goal because uh, I'm a Wolves fan. Anyway, football aside, football aside, we have D5. We're going to play D4. And I'm, I mean, I'm assuming we're just going to get kind of like a reverse Slav defense. I want to avoid playing Bishop 2 F4 and going into a London. So... I'm going to play f3 and I'm basically waiting for him to go e6 so that I can go bishop g5. If I go bishop g5 before he goes e6, then he will probably have the move knight to e4 attacking my bishop. If e6 is played though, the knight will be pinned to the queen so he won't be able to do that. I'm going to throw the move a3 in. I might throw the move h3 in as well. They're just useful moves and they're actually not that bad. And if he takes, I'm going to take. Okay, he doesn't. I basically just want to play this move, but my opponent isn't letting me do it. Um, we could play g4, bishop g6, bishop g2, but I don't like the prospect of h5. So we're not going to do that. This is actually really annoying. I really want to put a bishop on g5 without knight d4 being playable. And I can't go knight c3 to control that square because uh, there's a pawn there. Queen b3 would be a valid move. I could play queen b3 just to put pressure on him. Knight a5, queen a4, c6. That looks fine. What else could I play? I kind of just trying to wait for him to go e6. Um, let me think. Because I just don't want to play bishop f4. I could go knight e5. And if takes takes. If knight d7, then I win the d5 pawn. That's not bad, actually. That's actually not bad. That looks like a pretty decent move, you know. Because he can't really take. And see, the knight is somewhat misplaced on c6 without either the pawn being on c6 or the pawn being on c5 to challenge the d4 pawn. The knight is... It just looks a little bit awkward, to be honest. Okay, queen to d6. Now I really am considering the move bishop to f4, and I think it would be a fair move considering it is trying to skewer the queen. I don't really want to take the knight. I could go f4, but that looks very weakening. I suppose I am threatening g4, bishop to g6, and f5 trapping the bishop if I do that. But it feels like an overreach, and knight to e4 is probably very, very annoying. So let's go bishop f4. It's quite useful as well. Oh, that looks like a blunder. You know, when there's alignments like this, there can be a problem. And yes, my bishop is undefended. But can I do this? No. The queen defends that square. So this is really interesting. If I go knight d3 defending my bishop, can he go e5? Take, 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 
Queen d4, f6. E4, maybe? I don't know if E4 works. Wow. <clears throat> Fair play to my opponent. That was a very nice find. I initially thought knight g6 won, but I didn't realize that his queen was controlling that square because his knight moved from being in the way. Very interesting. And it's difficult to defend my knight again. <clears throat> One more time. It's difficult to defend it. So... I could go g4, though. Force the bishop back to g6. After I take, the queen has to take, and then I can take on c7. But again, h5 is very scary. So I'm going to go knight d3. Fair play to my opponent. He has he's handled this very well. And yeah, e5, I think, is probably the critical move. So, okay, how are we going to deal with this? Let's take. We're going to try and apply maximum pressure to the pinned piece. So, I think taking makes sense. Let's take. Knight takes. Queen d4, the only move is f6. It's the only move to defend. And I'd initially thought maybe e4, but it doesn't work because he can just take. And if I take the queen, that's not good. So, how can I capitalize here? I'd love to play this move. I could... Mm, then he can do that. And that's not good. Um, I could go knight d2. With the idea of g4, bishop g6, knight, F, knight f3. But I could start with queen d4, induce f6. Play knight d2. And I feel like it's kind of difficult for black to move then. Kind of difficult for him to move. Very interesting though. Very interesting. Let's... Oh, my opponent is also kind of threatening moves like knight d3 and knight f3 check to pick up the bishop. So I think we should do this. If he goes knight c6 attacking my queen... Takes, takes, that looks bad, because he's getting into c2, but if knight c6, queen a4, I maintain eyes on the bishop, I also pin the knight, that looks okay. Wow, my opponent is really finding some great moves, fair play to him. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually quite shocked, like, I obviously played a very strange opening, and maybe knight e5 from me was an overcommitment. But at the end of the day, it's equal material. I don't have any weaknesses. I'm just uh, lagging a little bit behind on development. Other than that, I'm okay. So my opponent could castle, but currently he has to deal with the problem with the knight on e5. And like I say, knight c6, queen e4, he finds it. Wow. Uh, what about queen e3 check? Queen e3, queen e6. The point is that I give a check and his queen is under attack, so he has to block with the queen. So queen e7 or queen e6. Either one. I probably just take it and take c7. And I'm behind on development, but I'm just up a pawn, and there's no obvious way in for him. Let's give a sample line. Queen e3, queen e7. Take, take, take. Rook c8. Bishop f4, knight a5, trying to get into b3. Knight d2, I defend. That looks good. That looks good. Let's go for it. Like I say, I know I am really behind in development, but I do have ideas of g4, bishop g6, and bishop g2 to accelerate my development, which would come with an attack on the d5 pawn. So, I do have some ways to kickstart my development, and 
I know I said quite a few times this game, I'm really concerned about g4, bishop g6, and h5 coming, but it's not so big of a problem once the queens are off the board. Uh, I don't want to take first, take on c7 first because then he'll double my pawns. And if I take on c7, the queen can't take because the queen is pinned. But I think it's better to take first. So let's do it. Queen e7. Bishop c7. And now we try to hang on, <laughs> basically. Okay, d4. So if I take and take, then his point is... His point is that his knight is getting in. Very valid point. I don't have to take. If takes, I can just take with the knight. This is maybe concerning, but... Okay, at least it takes him a bit longer. G4 I would like to play. G4, bishop, g6, bishop, g2. I'm threatening to take his knight. And I think that is a threat. Because that is where he's going to try and get his counterplay. By getting into my weak light squares with the knight. So let's do it. Now, he, what he might do, what he might do is after bishop g6, bishop g2, he might be trying some ideas with bishop b1, rook b1, takes, takes, takes. But I think there's too much pressure on the knight. I think there's too much pressure. So I'm not sure that works. So let's go bishop g2. If my opponent does something like castles, then uh, I can probably go like take, 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 and I'll be up two pawns. And yes, he has pressure, but I think at max he can probably only win one pawn back. That would be my guess. I do allow the bishop to get in here, but I guess worst comes to worst, I can always play a move like f3. Or if my knight ends up on d2 or c3, I'll control that square. Let's think a second. Let's think. If I go for a move like knight d2, that's not good. I don't think. It's okay, but I don't love it. I mean, I keep my bishop on the board. But I'm also not threatening anything. I think I should take. Like I said, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I think this is probably the way to go. To just try and snap some of his pieces off the board, because at the end of the day, we are two pawns up. Well, once we take on d4, we will be. Here, he tries to attack it. I can always play a move like e3. If he goes c5, if I take, then he takes on b2, that's a problem. But if takes bishop f6, I also have the option of bishop e5. Or if bishop f6, well, takes bishop f6, e3, c5, I also have the option of bishop e5 then. So that's okay. That's okay. Let's take. I don't think I'm blundering anything significant. Okay, he goes bishop f6. Bishop e5 is the move I want to play. E3, I don't like that it weakens my light squares further because I can't play F3 anymore. Let's do it. We're also just offering a trade, right? Even if I end up losing this E5 pawn, it's not the end of the world. But to be honest, once if like if he exchanges with me, then I can probably just play moves like F4, Knight C3, and I'm probably okay. I can probably hold on to my material. B2 might be a bit of an issue. Oh, he retreats. I don't think he has time for that. I can go F4. Then he has F6. So, knight C3 is good. It stops the bishop from coming in. So I think I like that. And it also just develops a piece, removes any opportunity for him to take with some weird tactics. It could go knight D2. It could go knight D2. Is there a difference? What does the knight on d2 defend? Defends b3. Defends c4. I could put the knight on c4. That might be a nice square. 
On C3, I'm accessing D5 and B5, and those squares are controlled, right? Also, I could go to like a square like F3 from D2 if I wanted. That, that looks quite nice, to be fair. If knight D2, F6, something like bishop F4, rook D8, I should just have E3. Let's do it. Rook C1 is a move I like. Let's retreat. I could retreat to G3, but then my bishop's a bit more out of the game than is necessary. Let's go to F4 instead. Yeah, moves I want to play are Rook C1. Oh my god, my opponent's giving me no time. But okay. Maybe C5 is his best option. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Takes, takes. He has some counterplay, maybe. But I don't know if I believe in it. Don't know if I believe in it. I can't play a move like knight f3 to defend because of bishop e4. And obviously he's just threatening to take. So, hmm. If knight b3? What about that? What about knight b3? Bishop e4 isn't the end of the world. Knight b3, if he takes, then I can probably take back with the knight. And I feel like my position's pretty strong. He does have the bishop pair, but you know. If knight b3, he doesn't have rook to b8, because I control that square. And I am threatening to take him. Then we get an opposite colored bishop endgame, but I'll be up three pawns, so it should be winning. Yeah, it... That should be winning, especially with rooks on the board. Knight b3, c4. I probably just retreat. And I have a passed pawn. I guess b2 is weak, but it's difficult to access b2 because you can't go to b8 without trading the bishop. That looks pretty nice, you know. Here, here, here. Bishop c5, I just have knight to e6. Knight b3... Again, something like this. That should be good. I can always play a move like bishop d6 to lock down the d-file. I think I like that. I'm spending a bit of time here because, again, it feels like a critical position. But knight b3, I think I'm a fan. Let me know what you would play here because I think this is a very important moment to capitalize on my advantage. Or my presumed advantage. I hope I'm not blundering anything stupid. Okay, I think he was probably expecting it. Let's go knight d4. Does that not blunder knight e6? With a big fork? My guy? Are you sure about that? If he wants to go bishop to e4, I can probably just castle. Remember, your king only moves through f1 and g1, so the fact that the h1 square is attacked is not a problem. And my opponent resigns. Very nice. Very interesting game. Uh, the opening was kind of weird, but I mean, hey, we controlled the dark squares in the center pretty successfully, which obviously when you play black and you play the Karo Khan, your aim is normally to control the light squares in the center. So on the flip side, with white, you want to control the dark squares in the center. Is it the best opening? No, I'm I'm not pretending it is. Like I know one c3 is not it's not really that good of an opening. But the point isn't for me to just win. The point is for me to win with a Karo Khan setup, or try to at least, because I'm trying to explain a lot of the ideas of the Karo Khan. And I think I think this game kind of does demonstrate that. So let's get into the game analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed. All right, I would encourage you guys to stick around for the analysis section because since the game was fairly short, I think we can go into some pretty interesting depth on some of the moves and see where the computer would have taken the game in many situations. 92.6% accuracy though, that's not bad. There is a very good chance I put that in the thumbnail, so um, you might already know that. But <laughs> yeah, I think I think this format is actually probably better because I really am a classical player. Like, I play classical chess. That is my forte. So, you know, Blitz, Bullet, 
did I say blit? Bullet. Or, you know, they're really not what I'm good at. And I think the slower the time control, the better I can play, and the longer that I have to explain my thought process. So, personally, I'm a fan of this format. Um, my opponent with 83.2% accuracy. So, pretty good, to be fair to him. Um, yeah, the game goes C3, which is obviously just not a good move. <laughs> but, yeah, D4, Knight F6, and Bishop F4 is the best move, right? And I know Bishop F4 is the best move. But I'm not here to play a London. Some of you in the comments have been like, what's all the London hate, blah, blah, blah. I know the London's a good opening. I know it's a very good opening. But personally, you know, you can say it's part of like a meme thing. Like, I'm literally just hating on it because it's a meme to hate on the London. Like, partially, yeah, because it's kind of funny. Like, chess meme culture is great. <laughs> like, how does chess have a meme culture? It's kind of hilarious. But also, I'm, you know... I'm playing from the white side here, the Karo Khan, to try and teach you guys how to play the Karo Khan. Now, I would not recommend playing it with white. I would only play it with black, right? Because you are at a bit of, bit of a disadvantage from each side. With black, you're always at a disadvantage, though, and you're fighting for equality. As white, why would you want to be fighting for equality? The thing is, with the black pieces, you don't get the opportunity to just put a London set up in place because your opponent will do things in the center that stop you from doing that so if i start playing london setups with the white pieces it's not really authentic to the karo khan and it's not going to be that useful when you guys want to play the karo khan with the black pieces so i hope you understand my thought process with that and if you disagree with me then yeah sure argue your case i'm up, i'm more than up for it you know I, i'm not going to argue with you i'm happy to have a debate about it but I think this is a better way to approach it. I go knight f3 because, you know, I want my opponent to play a move like e6 so that I can play bishop to g5 and get a more authentic Karo Khan type setup without the bishop on f4. And, you know, if my opponent was to play a move like h6, then I'm probably just going to take, whack my pawn on e3, and we're going to have a very nice game where I have really good control of the dark squares in the center. Like I said, with the black pieces, you have really good control of the light squares in the center. And we'll play chess from a Karo Khan structure. My opponent doesn't allow it, though. He goes knight c6. Knight bd2 is playable, to be fair. And I think I was just dead set on putting my bishop on g5. But you can play this in more of a collie style with moves like e3, knight bd2, bishop d3, castle rookie one and looking for moves like e4 and that that is fairly representative of the caro with the black pieces so maybe i'll do that in future but i throw a3 in a3 can never be a bad move my opponent goes bishop g4 sorry i was just looking at the computer for a second it said bishop g5 was good but i think knight e4 is just a problem because you have to drop the bishop back and i don't know i don't love this I don't love this. F6 is a really good move, apparently, which mm, I don't think many people are playing F6, <laughs> let's be honest. But yeah, I go H3 to ask the bishop a question. If it takes on F3, which I kind of expected him to, to be fair, then I'm going to take back with the E pawn. I'm going to put my bishop on D3, my bishop on G5, my knight on D2. I'm going to castle, put a rook on E1. And I think this is a very comfortable position. Maybe the queen goes out to B3. We have the bishop pair. We have some open lines towards his king, potentially. My opponent retreats. I go knight e5, which is an okay move. Knight bd2 is better. Bishop f4 is better. But like I say, I don't want to go bishop f4. So maybe in future, I will just put the knight on d2 if I don't get the opportunity to bring my bishop out first. More of a collie. The collie is actually quite a good opening. Anyway, knight e5. My opponent goes queen d6. So I expected him to take... And he can't play knight d7 because I'm just going to win the pawn. Apparently it's not that bad. But mm, why go into this with black? There's no need. So knight to e4 would be more likely. And uh, yeah, my opponent has a bit better development than me. But I have a fairly strong pawn on e5. And we're going to play chess. Moves like queen b3, maybe knight d2, maybe e3. Bring my bishop out to f4 to support the pawn. It, it's just normal chess, right? My opponent goes queen d6, though. And I go bishop f4, which is the best move. 
Now my opponent goes knight d7. Oh, I could take... So I did consider knight f7, right? But I thought queen f4, and if I go knight h8, my knight's just getting trapped. I'm just going to lose my knight. Because it has no way out. I don't know how the computer is claiming this is better. Wait. Queen h6. Right, so if black plays a move like castle queenside. Actually, castle queenside might be decent. Because my... F okay, let's say a6. Literally a nothing move. Then g4, and the bishop has to retreat to one of these squares, and I take it, and then I'm just up in exchange, right? If my opponent castles, then if g4, my opponent can go bishop to e8 to monitor my knight still. e3, queen f6. I'm just going to lose the knight. I don't see how the computer is arguing this is better. I'm really confused. Bishop g2, g6... And oh d5 is hanging, so let's say e6. C4. I'm just not even developed. I don't even know how this is a way to play. And the computer more and more goes for black being better. So okay, knight f7 is very, very complicated. G4 is playable. Now I considered this. I considered this, right? I said this in the game, but I was really scared about moves like h5 in this position. Apparently I'm absolutely fine. And I just go for the queen side. And d5. Okay, okay. I I I just thought that my bishop would be kind of stranded and I have no development, but apparently this is a valid way to play the position. Very interesting. I wonder if that was obvious to those of you watching or not, because to me, that seemed really, really risky to go for that line. Anyway, we go knight d3, defending the bishop, and the move is clearly e5, because if you move the queen, then I take on c7, I don't have my weakness on g4 to be exploited, my knight is doing a good job at controlling the center, I can drop my bishop back, I'm not that far behind in development, and I'm just up a clean pawn, right? So e5 is the move. D takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen d4, and I'm putting pressure on the knight. You can play knight c6, which is what my opponent played, but better is f6, just defending the knight, which is what I expected. My plan was knight d2, which is the best move, because you're just developing, right? Let's say, I mean, it's kind of difficult to move with black here. But let's say, I don't know. Queen e6, breaking the pin. e4, the computer thinks it's fairly nice for white. It's okay for black, but we've got a fight. We've got a fight. I could queenside castle, queenside castle. Then, well, then a7 would hang, actually. So let's say c6. Or bishop d6 is playable. It's just an interesting position. Anyway, he goes knight c6. And the point is, if I take the queen... In knight d4, and if I try and save my bishop, like if I move my bishop back, then knight c2. So I would have to take on d4, and we'd have bishop takes d6. And here I just thought I can't be better because he has the bishop pair. Everything is basically equal. Like we both have two pawn masses. Yes, they're distributed a little bit differently, but I can't really do much with the c file. He can't do much with the e file. We're probably going to get some position like this, and I don't see how I can try and prove any advantage. So queen e3 is the best move. Queen e7, queen e7, bishop e7, bishop c7. And my opponent finds the best move, he goes d4. And the point is, if I take him, then knight d4, and I have some problems on my hands. I have some big problems. So, I don't allow it. I go g4, which is the best move. Bishop g6, bishop g2. My point is, if my opponent plays a nothing move, well, this is kind of what happened in the game. My plan was to take, apparently here, bishop b6 is better because I can attack the pawn like that. My opponent castles. Bishop takes c6 is the best move. bc6. And then I take on d4. So I'm up two pawns. But I'm only like 0.9 in my favor. 
because my opponent has a lot of activity and uh, my pieces aren't developed, I just have a bishop out, right? My opponent also has the bishop pair. I feel like he really misplayed this though. Bishop f6 in no way was a good move. Rook a c8 looks far more natural. After I retreat the bishop, you can play moves like rook d8, e3, c5, and you're actually posing some problems for me now because I don't have time to get developed. I'm fine. Like, I'm okay. Black still needs to be accurate. He needs to play moves like bishop to f6 to target here, knight c3, takes, 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 and then we have an opposite colored bishop position. It's going to be tough for me to hang on to my pawns. Maybe I can push this for a win because the rooks are still on the board. But it's going to be difficult. My opponent probably has to be quite accurate. You know, a move like rook a5 just blunders an exchange. Um, so it's not easy to win your pawn back. Well, you're down two pawns. But if you win one back, you're probably okay because of the opposite color bishops. But, you know, it, he does have to be accurate to find this. He plays bishop f6 though. And yeah, this is just not good. So e3 is fine. Bishop to e5 is fine. I choose bishop to e5 because I'm just offering trades. If he takes and plays something like rook f to e8, then I was just going to go f4. And you can't really do anything about this. If you try something like f6 and bishop to d3, it doesn't work because I always have knight c3 defending the e2 square. Or I suppose rook h2. But knight c3 is obviously better but he backs off and the problem is if he tries i don't know um because taking is the best move if he tries this then i'm just going to ruin his structure the problem for black here is that he has to take me because otherwise he's allowing me to take him and ruin his structure or he retreats like he does in the game and allows me to get developed the only thing Black has going for him at this point is the fact that he is developed very, very well and I am not. So he needs to move quickly and retreating is not how you do that because I can get developed. Knight d2 is a mistake, funnily enough. Knight c3 is better. wonder why. Knight d2, f6, bishop f4, rook a d8, e3. Why is this... Why is this different? If knight c3 and my opponent does the same thing, what's the difference? Ah, here I can castle queenside and b2 is protected and my rook defends d4, which wouldn't have happened with a knight on d2 blocking it. And then c5 isn't really effective because if you go c5 now, I can go d5 and I can just start pushing because my knight controls the square and my rook controls the square that's very interesting that is really interesting so 92 was a mistake but it's not a big deal to be honest f6 bishop f4 rook ad8 e3 my opponent goes c5 and he's posing me some problems if i take like i'm okay but i could get into a little bit of trouble i saw this position and i was like i can't castle my knight hangs and where is my knight going i c4 i suppose is good and you're actually struggling to keep the bishop on the board. But then if I take the bishop, we have opposite colored bishop endgame. And let's just have a sample line with h6, knight b6, a b6. Okay, here I have bishop c7. So let's say instead we have rook d7. And we have takes, takes. It's kind of difficult to convert this. I don't know if I would trust myself to win this position. But while it should be winning, opposite colored bishops can always be difficult. I think if all the rooks get traded, then let's just set up some silly position where all the rooks come off the board. Um, like, oh my god, like this. Game, please. Please. Uh, wait, no, let's do this. <laughs> Sorry. If all the rooks come off the board like this, then maybe this is a draw. Maybe this is a draw. The computer says it's better, but sometimes the computer's wrong in opposite colored bishop end games. It'd be interesting to see what the actual like analysis of this position would be with a computer on much higher depth. But I don't know if I could convert this. However, with the rooks still on the board, maybe I can. 
maybe I can. Because I can play moves like Rook C6, Rook H C1 if possible, and you know, I can keep fighting to try and prove an advantage. But yeah, after knight b3, my opponent takes. Now c4 is the best move, and this is kind of what I was expecting, because it keeps more pieces on the board primarily. Something like knight a5, knight d2, knight a5, they're both pretty similar to be honest. Rook d5 is the best move, giving the pawn up. And then rook c8, black is now down three pawns. B3, bishop c2, knight d2. And apparently black has some counterplay, but god is it, it's going to be so difficult to prove this. The only thing that black has going for him is the fact that my king is in the center. If black gives me any time to play a move like king e2 or castles, it's game over. It's probably game over regardless, but it might have been a better way to go about the position. But uh, yeah, he takes on d4, I take with a knight. Because the point is that I'm blocking files off. And my knight's quite active now. And yeah, he just blunders really badly with bishop c5. And uh, the game is just completely over because he's losing an, an exchange and he's losing the game. He's already down two pawns as it is. So what could he have done differently? I mean, rook, rook f8 is apparently the best move. You're not threatening anything though. I can just castle and I'm fine. Maybe you can try and put pressure on with bishop c5 now that I can't go knight e6. Something like knight f5. The computer wants to trade. There's no way a human trades. I don't believe it. Bishop f7 looks more natural to me. And the problem is I'm just going to challenge on the open files now that I'm developed and I'm going to win the game. I might start pushing these pawns. a7 is weak. And yeah, you have the bishop pair, but you don't really have many targets. And my knight is actually quite active now. Whereas back a few moves ago in this position, my knight was not so active. On f5, it is obviously a way better piece. So yeah, that's the game. Uh, my opponent just blunders it at the end, but it was kind of coming. It was kind of coming. He probably could have tested me a bit further, but fortunately, we actually had time on the clock because I was playing a 15-minute game rather than a 10-minute game. So like I say, maybe that is the way forward for this series. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.